All right, so next up, I wanna talk about a newer addition in our business, and that is Hubstaff. So we've been using Hubstaff for probably, let's say, eight, nine, 10 months, something like that. Uh, I would say eight to 10 months we've been using Hubstaff, and folks, at the end of the day, I absolutely love it. And I'm gonna point out why I like it, what we've used in the past, why I didn't like those services, et cetera. Um, and, and I think you guys will be pleasantly surprised if you, if you haven't heard of Hubstaff um, with how it functions, how it works, and how we're using it as well. So Hubstaff is my HR time tracking, screen tracking, payment software. And I love, 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 love the integration that they have with uh, TransferWise and PayPal MassPay. So <laughs> with TransferWise, we've all but automated our weekly payroll. And all we really gotta do is just make sure that there's enough funds inside of TransferWise, right? Like our holding account, just like a PayPal account, to pay our independent contractors and team members and people that we need to pay. Unfortunately, none of my PayPal accounts anymore have mass pay through PayPal. So I cannot use or speak to their integration with MassPay, but from what I'm told, it works just like TransferWise does. So again, it, just, it will do payroll automatically and you can set up payroll to run automatically and you can integrate with PayPal MassPay to, to pay those people out. And it's, it's beautiful because you can put in like maximums, you can set alerts, you can say, I only want this team member to be able to work 40 hours and here's their rate, like alert me if they go over or like, you know, wh whatever you want. Like there are controls in there so that somebody can't work, you know, around the clock and ding you for it, right? Um, this has made payroll very, very, very easy to do every week. So traditionally speaking, like, like going back <laughs> in some of my other businesses, right? Like we had ADP, we had full on payroll services. We had, uh, we had health insurance. We had investment accounts and contributor matching and the fees that we were paying on that stuff and the complexity of the work that had to be done every two weeks for payroll was freaking asinine, right? Um, this makes the whole process like super easy. So at the end of the day, now this works for me and it works for me really well. I'm able to take my team members, I'm able to put in their hourly rates, I'm able to put in how many hours that you know I want them to work a week, uh, I can track which projects they're, they're spending that time on. I can even say, I only want you to spend 10 hours a week on this, and I want you to spend 10 hours a week on this, and, and I can get it to track that way and put those limits in place as well. So then when I can then set up when payroll is and how often that occurs. For us, because of how easy this is, I've got payroll happening every week instead of every two weeks or every month just because it's, it's easy. And so all that I have to do again, um, and I personally have it handled by someone on my team, is basically um, every Monday our team gets paid uh, every week. And so on Thursday, we, the, the team member simply looks at the balance inside of TransferWise and looks at you know, what, what payroll has been and how many hours people have been working and just make sure that there's enough money in there to pay payroll on Monday, right, when that happens and when uh, Hubstaff you know, automates the payments through TransferWise. And so this has been an absolutely uh, amazing discovery for me. And I, I've just been floored, absolutely floored with the process. And if you haven't heard of TransferWise and, and you're a PayPal user or you're interested in paying your team, your contractors, I would highly, highly suggest checking out TransferWise. It's been an amazing uh, game-changing tool for us. So without further ado, I'll go ahead and open up Hubstaff and we'll take a little, a little look-see under the hood. So 
this is the home page of Hubstaff. And I wanted to walk through, before I went through the app, I wanted to walk through just, just some of the features. And full disclosures, like always, folks, I'm gonna show you guys what I'm using. I'm, I'm gonna be really blunt, not hide as well, what I'm not using. Um, because a, a lot of software out there, like for us, has a very specific use. And I don't use the other features. And so if I don't use them, I'm not gonna proclaim to be an expert. So here, for example, um, time tracking, I definitely use. Uh, and I use time tracking and the, the productivity monitoring. So the productivity monitoring will show me if somebody hasn't moved their screen, they haven't typed anything, and they've been on the same web page, for example, or shown the same screenshot for an hour, right? I can see that, or half an hour. I can see how active people are. And obviously, like I said, I can see their screenshots, it reports, um, it tells me you know, uh, when they clocked in, when they clocked out, it shows me how long they worked on different projects. Uh, I can set a schedule as well. Um, I don't use the GPS tracking at all. Um, I don't use any of the integrations that you see up here as well. So you, you see CRM integrations up here. And I used to use Basecamp um, we're not doing, like we don't have a lot going on inside of Basecamp. So um, internally here at Digital Triggers anyway, uh, we were using Basecamp and just don't have a ton going on in there. And so I actually moved over to Asana and I'm using their free plan, saving like a hundred bucks a month. And so far, I really like it. Um, I may at some point look at this integration, uh, but who knows, it could be a year and that won't happen. Well, <laughs> not real sure. So um, all of this, cool, basically use. Um, I, I don't use GPS tracking. So uh, for the week, right, um, and, and by the day, I can see what's happening, how many hours for my entire team. I can see for, you know, individual members. I can even break this down to see, you know, for example, what Craig did in his four hours or what Peter did in his eight hours or Hannah in her 10 hours, what projects she worked on, you can see screenshots of what they were working on, et cetera. Um, this is a little uh, example of what you can see for employee monitoring. Um, here they talk about integrations. Um, they have to-do lists in here now, like this is a whole new section, this plan, uh, implement, and um, well, I guess not implement, they've had this uh, projects for a long time, but this plan is new, at least as of recording this, I believe. I haven't really played with this feature at all. Um, so just full, full disclosure, like always, you know me. Um, so wanted to give you a quick heads up in terms of what you see when you log in. So this, you'll see like projects down here, um, digitaltriggers.io, uh, lead gen prospector, AMA, Sinwire. Um, you're gonna see members here. You're gonna see today, this week. Uh, you're gonna see apps. Um, and for me, guys, it's always like Google Chrome is always a biggie. Google Docs is gonna always be a biggie. biggie. Um, Help Crunch, we actually moved to from Intercom. So Help Crunch is gonna be a big one. That's like our support desk, our live chat. Um, Sinwire.com. Like our, our team's always in there working on it, you know, doing tests, using it ourselves. Uh, and so you can view like kind of all the main apps and URLs that people um, are looking at. This one's really helpful to see if maybe your, your, your team members are not being uh, very work appropriate. Um, you know, they're, they're on social media, you know, they're, they're playing with Skype all day long every day and you don't communicate with Skype and they're just communicating with their friends. Um, I'm not really a stickler about that unless I see it become a big problem and it's always happening. Then, uh, the, you know, uh, the hammer shall come down. <laughs> um, so what else can I show you? Um, so here's recent activity. So you can see, um, what's happening here. So just looking, and again, I gotta be careful just because some of this stuff, like if I open up this screenshot, this is Entreport, this is where we send a bunch of emails from. I can be showing people's email addresses. I don't wanna do that. Um, this is our help desk, so I don't wanna show you that. Again, that could be sensitive data, passwords, um, things like that, emails. Um, so this is John, this is one of the guys that does design work for us. Here you can see him working on a, um, 
on a graphic here, um, long-term mother funnel. So this is a funnel um, that I teach people to create in our cold email um, training and cold email product. And so he's been working on kind of re-going through the graphics and everything that I had made um, and, and making them a whole lot better. Um, it's making a whole lot more sense. It's easier to see. Patterns are easier to follow. So, uh, so this is what John was working on, as you can see uh, this morning. Um, so this is a screenshot of um, something that most of you guys don't know about, so we won't open up that. This is a screenshot inside of Sinwire. So you guys can see, um, this is our QA team. Chandra uh, heads up our QA uh, and quality assurance for the dev stuff. So basically Chandra's in testing all day, every day, testing our software. And so you can see what he was up to here. Um, under to-dos, you can see kind of the to-dos or what people were working on. Um, escalations. So escalations are problems that get reported or that we find internally. Um, both are, are escalations. Um, and so escalations get reported um, by QA and then uh, we assign these to developers to then finish them. Uh, when the developers then say that they're done, we don't just take that as good enough and say that it's fixed and it's finalized. Um, the, the developer then assigns it back to whoever reported the issue, right? So then they verify that their problem that they found that they reported is actually fixed. So that little thing, if you're doing software development, that helped us out a ton. Um, over here, activity. Um, Show you what this looks like. So this is going to be screenshot activity. Uh, I got to pick somebody um, just so that it doesn't distract you guys or show something that I shouldn't be showing. So this is just more of what I was showing you before, the kind of showing the screenshots. Um, we can look at then apps and URLs and locations, um, timesheets. We can then run reports as well. I mean, the, the number of reports here are ridiculous. Uh, we got to-dos, again, I don't, I don't really use the to-dos. If we click here, man, I don't even know what you guys are gonna see. Yeah, it's like, dude, you haven't done any to-dos. <laughs> um, invoices, so you can actually invoice customers through this. Um, I don't use the invoices function. Uh, schedules, um, I do use pretty loosely. And the reason that I use the schedules is I'm able to get uh, email alerts based upon the schedules. So in here, I can put in settings where I say that um, somebody should be coming in, you know, roughly this time to this time. And if they don't show up, I can set an alert where I will get an alert. And it's like Monday through Friday, this person should be here and they don't come in and it's nine o'clock and that's when their shift starts. I forget what it is. There's some kind of setting. If they show up within 30 minutes, it doesn't send it or 15 minutes or whatever you set. Um, so if somebody just no shows, I get an email and that's important. Like I should know that, but I don't want to have to micromanage the entire team, right? Like I, I don't want to be that boss. Um, the other thing that happens is you can set like minimums. How many hours should somebody work during that shift? You define the shift, right? But then how much time should somebody work? And so it'll tell me if somebody came in and they only worked for three hours that day or two hours and they were expected to work six, I will get a notification. So again, that helps me just understand what's happening without micromanaging uh, the team members or without me having to go to that activity and look every day at what everybody's doing, like screenshot by screenshot, I, I don't get that crazy with it. It's, it's uh, <laughs> the point of no return, right? Like you're just not gonna get a return on any of that effort. So don't get me wrong, once a month or so, I'll dive through and just make sure I don't see anything disturbing. Might take 30 minutes to review the entire team. Um, Let's see, what else could I show you? Projects um, here, or time off. I set time off in here so you can put in, you know, how people earn time off or how much time off they get based upon what schedule, kind of what holidays do they get off, things like that as well. Projects, so projects for me just help us track time. And what I mean by that is um, when, when somebody's working on escalations, they'll put escalations, right? So then I can track it back and I can know this much amount of time was spent on escalations. If we're developing a new product, we can put that, right? If you wanna be able to keep track of your uh, the time that you're investing in a product or the time that you're investing on a specific client, you can put your client in as a project. So then you can say, you know, the, the team put in this many hours and this is what the actual hard cost was for those hours with the team. So that's really uh, nice to be able to use. Members is obviously just members. 
Um, clients, again, I don't use this functionality. I don't let clients in here. Uh, and integrations, I don't use. Payments I use, again, we, we, uh, we have it set up to use uh, TransferWise. And so guys, again, at the end of the day, TransferWise and Hubstaff has been a game changer. And if uh, you wanna use PayPal, Hubstaff and PayPal, uh, I think could be a game changer for you or TransferWise and PayPal. Um, so again, I use vacation and time off tracking. I get email alerts again uh, when someone doesn't work enough, when someone doesn't show up to their shift. Um, and let's talk about kind of the elephant in the room then, I guess, uh, which is pricing. Uh, so Hubstaff costs five to $10 per user per month. And essentially I use the $10 per user per month plan. And the reason that I use that one is it includes payroll and the automation of that payroll. And it doesn't have to be completely automated, right? Like you can still manually do the push. I just want it to be as automated as possible. Um, the uh, bonus then, if you guys do jump inside of Hubstaff, uh, I, I went through and when we onboard someone, we have um, some checklists and kind of more documentations, things that we give uh, a new hire. And there's 11 of these documents, right? Uh, and they're all things to do. Like here's how to set up your email account. Um, here's how to use this. Here's how that works, things like that. But I counted 11 basic docs that I thought would be really good. And that would have a lot of value for you. And chances are you probably haven't made these docs. So this would be a big, big win. So if Hubstaff sounds great, you wanna automate your payroll. You saw some interesting things that I shared with you guys today. Um, you like the email alerts, right? Um, I definitely think that this tool is an absolute no brainer. Um, if you guys enroll with my link, you guys will get 10% off digitaltriggers.io slash hubstaff. Once you guys enroll, just take a little screenshot that you enrolled, right, that you paid. Just shoot us a little screenshot here inside of support. And uh, you can email us support at digitaltriggers.io or in the bottom right in the little live chat bubble, you can communicate with us there. And just say like, I, I signed up for Hubstaff and I want your inboarding onboard or your uh, internal onboarding checklist and docs, all 11 of them. Show us your screenshot and I'll shoot them over to you, all right? Sound good?